Hi, happy Tuesday, uh, Empowering Time Markers Group. My name is Tamira Hamilton. I blog about the business of beauty by day. I am a digital social marketing consultant in by night. It sounds so interesting, right? I am a um, beauty blogger and my blog is self-monetized. So I'm going to give a few moments here. Uh, I see Dina is here. I know Dina. I know Tia. Thanks, Tia, for having me. Throw some waves up. Throw your hands in the air. So we get a few more people on before I get started. Really informal. Really, really informal. I'm just going to share some tips, my experience, and um, talk about something that I really love. Thank you. It's one of my favorites. I try not to wear it too much, but um, the jacket I came down to keep me warm in, I got a little bit of makeup on it. So speaking of personal brand, like I could hear myself in my head, like, is that the personal brand you want to put out when you're speaking about personal branding and getting to the front of the room? I don't think so. So I actually keep quote unquote wardrobe down here. So I was able to change pretty quickly, pretty quickly. Hi, Jessica. Is it Schlaffer? Schlaffer? Hi, Jessica. Thank you for being here. Very happy to have you join us here tonight. I'm super excited to talk about personal branding, uh, something I love very, very much. Um, if you follow me at all on social media, you probably can tell that I am into the whole personal branding um, and marketing. I've got 30 years. Yeah. I know 30 years of sales and marketing experience so I got it right the second time Schlafer okay um, so I got nearly 30 years of sales and marketing experience I was able to intern paid internship right out of high school like two weeks out of high school um, through a program I'm from Racine Wisconsin which is the home of SC Johnson a family company and so I worked on Glade my first summer and then um, after that, I worked over in their professional division in distributor services and actually got 12, 15, 20 hours a week um, during the school year because I commuted back and forth down to Kenosha. And um, that was great because I had a little baby at home. So having that income was an awesome thing. And I got to learn a lot. Okay, so I would sit in class during the day and hear about and read about and you know at home doing homework read about these concepts and then like literally um go to work sometimes in the afternoon sometimes in the morning if so it might be vice versa but i would go to work um, i'm thinking of some very concrete examples <laughs> that i remember and go to work and hear about the same thing so that applied to even accounting right i remember one day sitting in class um learning about return on capital expenditures. And then that afternoon, I was sitting in a meeting and they had spreadsheets and they were talking about return on capital expenditures. And so I was able to see it in real life. And I always felt that that gave me a heads up, but I knew that I wanted to do marketing in high school. And um, the reason why I knew that I wanted to go into marketing was because um, I had been marketing my entire education already right so uh, just to give you an example I remember sixth or seventh grade we had to do in like social studies this um, project where we had to create a travel banner to you know get people to go to a destination and mine was Jamaica and so I made this banner and the teacher and everybody was just wowed because I just always was a marketing person in third grade um, my report on John F Kennedy you know I made a a book cover and it had the title and the index and everything so marketing has just always been my jam and so I spent geez 22 24 years um, in corporate America um, between my internship and then began a job with within weeks after getting my undergraduate degree of course again because I had a kid at home um, and didn't know that <laughs> within the next year I would be pregnant with my my second so 22 24 years in corporate America leading teams marketing sales leadership is really like my my wheelhouse and 
Um, I got tired of being overworked, underpaid, and overlooked for a promotion. And so in 2013, I don't know why for some reason I want to say 2012, but it was really 2013, is when I started, um, you know, my first blog and online business. And um, since that time, um, I have gotten tons of certifications. No, well, tons is a bit of an exaggeration to me, but I've got my certifications. Email marketing, running traffic, content marketing, um, I got my certifications in digital marketing in the digital marketing world because they did not teach that not you know I graduated from undergrad in 96 I got my masters in 2003 and another one in 2005 and so Facebook was just not really a thing then right you know I remember the first time I laid eyes on Google and went to search Google instead of YouTube was when I was actually the first night of um, getting my master's degree okay and that was just weeks before the whole September 11th thing. So I've really spent nearly, not nearly, since 2013 until now, really mastering online marketing. But here's what I will tell you about personal branding. Personal branding, you have to have a personal brand. So I'm going to give you a couple things to do to kind of figure out what your personal brand is. When you get off of this broadcast or even, well, no, you can't do it while you're on here um, because the way everything works. But when you leave this broadcast, right, what I want you to do is I want you to text five, ten people, direct message them and ask them, when you hear my name, okay, so when you see my name, when you see a picture of me, what comes to mind? What do you think, right? You can, if you have customers, if you have clients, you can ask them as well. You can do some sort of survey. You can ask them informally. You can um, even set up calls. Just say, hey, we're really, you know, making sure we're aligned with our branding and we want to know, you know, when you think of our company, when you think of our services, what are the first three to five words that come to mind? And that's going to give you an idea of what other people think of you, okay? The other piece of this exercise is for you to write down what do you want other people to think of when they think of you, your company, your services, right? And the reality is what other people think of you, that is truly your brand. Your brand is your reputation, right? Your brand is what other people think of when they think of you. And like I said, you have one whether you know it or not, okay? And so... I'm going to give you an example. I'm big on examples. I'm big on analogies, right? So um, I want you to, uh, well, okay. So an example, when I, my first job out of college, I was, I was branded, I was known as Excel spreadsheets. If somebody had a problem with Excel spreadsheets, they wanted to make it look nice. They wanted macros. They wanted to make it, um, you know, do more automation. They would come to me. I was the Excel person. You know, if they wanted even to make a PowerPoint look more visually appealing in our department, that I was your girl. People would come to me for that, right? Um, in another job, I would always wear an ascot with my corporate apparel. And so if somebody was describing me to someone else, they would say, you know, Tamara, she always wears the scarf, the, the ascot, right? You know, it can be your hair color. Now I'm branded, not so much to one hair color, but everybody knows and expects from me crazy, insane hair color, right? Usually bold colors when they think of me, right? So drop in the comments, what are some things that people should be thinking of when they think of you, right? And so it can not only be color, it can not only be your logo, it needs to also be what do you stand for. I definitely, people think of me, they think of marketing. People think of me, they think of social media, right? People think of me, they think of tacos because I'm pretty loud about it on social media that I love tacos and I would eat tacos 365, seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? So what people also pay attention to what people are tagging you on on social media. That's your personal brand, right? Um, Jessica says, my writing, my sense of humor. And then you want to also look at, Jessica, are those things that you want to be known for, right? Because that's where your marketing is going to come in 
as far as building brand awareness, okay? And brand awareness is huge because everyone is on social media trying to sell, right? And they're usually selling to the wrong people and in the wrong way. You wanna see an example of that? Go over to my timeline, I posted a rant today, okay? So social media is not where transactions really should be occurring for your business. I'm just gonna be honest, right? That's not where the transaction should be occurring. The transaction, the sale, the closing should actually be quote unquote offline, on the phone, Zoom, Messenger, email, right? Because social media is really for you to build that brand awareness, okay? Do you see some people selling online? Absolutely, you know why they're able to sell online? Because they built the brand awareness and people have confidence enough in their brand to be able to sell. So how do you create that awareness? How do you create that confidence? You create that with your content, okay? Your content is what is going to allow you to build that confidence, which is just a fancy way of saying that people know, like, and trust you because they see you as a credible authority or expert at what it is you are posting blog posts about, whatever it is you are making videos about, going live about, sharing articles about, that is all part of your brand. That is how people recognize and see me as a social media expert because I rant about it. I rant when I see stuff that I don't like or that is ineffective and it drives me wild because I don't know why people are doing that, but I don't stay on the negative side. <laughs> I do also share a lot of valuable tips, right? On my blog, lives, and even long form, semi bloggish type posts on social media, right? So the reason you want to do that is multiple, okay? Number one, and first and foremost, overlapping everything, is that it's going to create the credibility, the trust, and the, the no factor, right? It's going to make you appear as an authority. It's going to make you appear as an expert, okay? And what I want to clarify here when I say authority or expert, if you are not a doctor, you're not going to present yourself as a doctor, Okay, so if you are selling, for example, health and wellness supplements, you're not going to present yourself as a health professional. You are going to present yourself as someone who uses the product, who enjoys the product, and here's what the product has done for me, and here's why I like the product, which is usually because of what it's done for you, right? And I believe in full disclosure and transparency and saying, I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to diagnose you or heal you or anything. All I can do is I can tell you my experience with these products. And when I put this cream on, my eczema cleared up in seven days. Now, I'm not saying it's going to do the same for you. It All I can do is tell you what it did for me. If you want to give it a try, here's where you can DM me or contact me and I can get you the information for you to give it a try if that's what you choose to do after talking to your physician, right? Now, I'm gonna tell you, people appreciate that honesty. They appreciate that candor, they appreciate that trust, okay? So that's just one example. I have a client who is a licensed therapist. So last week we got together and we really sat down and we nailed down who is it that she serves and how she serves them, right? How she serves them is not just the mechanical how, but also from a branding and positioning standpoint, what is her messaging? What are her core pillars going to be in her messaging to attract that ideal client to her? Now, this client also has aspirations and dreams of speaking. She wants to do a lot more speaking. I'm like, then you definitely want to do video, right? It's going to be a lot easier to attract speaking gigs if you are speaking on social media. It's gonna be a lot easier to attract um, guest blog posts if you are sharing your blog posts and if you are doing more long form written content. So if you want to get in front of the room, create your own rooms on, on a, I was gonna say Audible, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks, on a Clubhouse, you know, go live on YouTube, 
or in in upload your videos to YouTube go live on Facebook right and show yourself doing what it is that you aspire to do and really niche down your content your subject matter and I promise you if you get that content shared into the right groups you have the right audience interacting with that content people will begin to reach out to you and ask you to do exactly what I'm doing right now, right? The, this is my second time speaking in this group. The first time Tia came to me because someone else referred her to me because they had interviewed me for their seven sisters, uh, seven layers of sisterhood, and I did that interview. And then so Tia came to me and said, hey, Shannon said we should connect, and we connected, and I spoke last fall on self-care and she reached out about a month ago and said, hey, I want you to come back and talk about personal branding and, and or marketing. And I said, I would love to. Every week there is something else coming up where someone is asking me to speak, okay? So I'm going to share something with you that um, before I do, I just want to check in. Pa hashtag pause myself right how y'all doing out there are you is am, are you are you picking up what I'm throwing down here is this information you know it revelatory or helping you out in any way shape or form you can start asking your questions as well in the comments and I will definitely answer those I think we are slotted for 30 minutes so we're doing good on time um so so yeah okay so uh, while you guys are kind of checking in and letting me know what you're thinking about the information that you're getting so far, I'm going to share um, something with you that I don't think a lot of people realize when it comes to social media, okay? Um, that's all. That's part of my branding, Zelda. Part of my branding is you're going to get the truth. You're going to get some truth serum from Tamira, okay? And I'm going to be me. I'm not going to pretend to be something that else that I'm not. I'm going to be 100% with you at all times, okay? Thank you for sharing you with us. I love it. Makes sense. This is my second time hanging out with you, and you're awesome. Thank you for this. You are welcome. I, I, hey, you want me to talk about tacos? You want me to talk about marketing? You want me to talk about some messed up, failed relationships? I can talk about that all day long, okay? I, I am here for it. You want me to talk about makeup? You want me to be talking about self-care and making yourself feel good i can talk about that right so something that a lot of people don't realize right so you might see these accounts on social media especially instagram that have these huge numbers right and um you know what you don't what you may not realize especially when it comes to a lot of these course creators which i am a course creator they're going to sell you, oh, this is how you grow a following, okay? And they're going to tell you all these things, and then you might buy the course, and you might try some of those things, and you might get a little bit of traction, but you just might not get all the way there with the numbers and the growth that they've seen, okay? And I'm going to explain to you why. Do you want to know why? If you want to know why, let me know in the comments, throw up some, or tap those hearts on the little thingy there tap those hearts and let me know if you want to know why you may not be getting the results you want from social media based on what a lot of the gurus are telling you okay cuz this when I figured this out it changed everything it changed everything for me okay so Tia says absolutely I see some hearts just bang those hearts out right there wake the rest of this group up make them get in here because this is this is some good stuff here okay this is some really, really good stuff, all right? So here's the thing. A lot of those people that have those big followings, not all of them, but some of them, and especially like your course creators in that, right? The reason that they have the size following that they have has usually nothing to do with what they're selling you in your course. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. Some of them, and I know for a fact because I've been in masterminds where some of them have admitted it, some of them bought some followers, not all of them, some of them bought some followers and not all of their followers, but they, they, they use some bots and some followers and things that are now against regulation. Some of them also built at a time when the algorithm was, there was no algorithm or it was a lot looser, right? But a lot of them, and I've heard it straight from the horse's mouth, the real reason 
that they get the following and the growth that they get, especially today, the way Instagram, for example, is set up, is because they do exactly what I'm doing right now. They make the circuit, right? I want you to think back to when Oprah was still on the air, and I want you to think when Tom Cruise was still the it actor. Remember when he jumped up on the couch, right? But if Tom Cruise had a movie releasing in the next few weeks, say Mission Impossible, one of the Mission Impossibles, what did you see Tom Cruise do? He went on Good Morning America. He went on Oprah. He went on whatever the CBS or I don't know. If C no, C Good Morning America, GMA is, is ABC. He went on the NBC show. He was on every magazine cover. He made the rounds. So what he did and I'm going to get into something else here really quickly. What he did was he went and he leveraged his influence, his reputation, his branding with the Good Morning America audience, right? Because he already has his own audience that's going to follow him. And he's going to bring them to Good Morning America. But Good Morning America is also bringing their audience to him, right? Same with Oprah. He is going to bring his persona and those Tom Cruise lovers, which I was like, just thought he was so handsome till I found out he was only 5'6". They're all going to want to watch Oprah that day because he's going to be on there, right? Yeah, right. Who can forget that Oprah episode? That's when people were kind of like, okay, maybe Tom's a little crazy, right? So that's what you want to do. You want to borrow other people's audiences, okay? So remember when I talked about my client last week? That's the first thing we did was we figured out who her ideal client is. Who is it that she serves? And then part of that process is where, where is your ideal client hanging out, right? What are they interested in? Where, where are they hanging out? Because that's where we got to get you. We got to make sure you're wherever they're hanging out. You got to go be a part of the crowd. You got to be a part of the conversation. That's going to serve you a couple purposes. Number one, it's like... It's like the old, if, I used to love that show, Mad Men, the focus group. It's, you know, the focus group. You you literally get to watch them in their habitat and hear their conversation and hear their words. Then you're going to use their words in your messaging. But it also, you want to get to the front of whatever that room is. So if my ideal client is in Empowering Time Markers, I want to get to the front of the room of Empowering Time Markers, Right? Did you know that there's like this whole underground advertising on in Facebook groups and on Instagram where you're advertising, you're paying for advertising, but it's actually a much better use of your advertising dollar to go direct to the person who owns the room or is renting the room than to Instagram or Facebook? Did you know that? I mean, some of it's kind of illegal, but they don't know how they're going to find out, right? So you want to get to the front of the room, whatever room your ideal client is hanging out in, okay? Because what happens is I still have this recorded and saved. I think I actually paid for it on iTunes when CNBC did that whole show like 10, 15, no more than 10, like 15, 20 years ago called The Oprah Effect right before her show was getting ready to retire. The whole Oprah Effect, right? That's live, but they were talking about it in a different sense than what I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it in, in in the sense of what Tom Cruise did to promote Mission Impossible. He went from room to room to room to room. He got all dapper and cute and put on his best personality. And it's actually written in their contracts, and they don't get paid to do that. That's why they negotiate as much as they can up front for those movies, because that's part of the work, is they have to go and do that. It's called public relations. They have to go and they have to make those rounds to promote the movie, to help make the movie be what? A box office hit, right? And so that's what you want to do. You want to make a list of the rooms you need to get in front of. And you don't, uh, you don't want to just wait for people to invite you to the front of the room. Okay? You don't want to just wait for people to invite you to the front of the room. It's a little different than promotion in this sense, Tia, because you're not going there to promote in the sense that Tom Cruise did. You're going there to do what I'm doing right now. You're going there to provide value. And then at the end of that, you're going to share a freebie in order for them to get into your sales funnel, 
I hope I didn't lose anybody yet. So y'all just check in. Are y'all still with me? Are you with me? Okay. You're going to share something for free at the end. And usually who is, who's ever room, if it's a actually two person interview, not a takeover like this, what they're going to do is they're going to ask you, how can people connect with you? And you can say, well, you know, I brought a free gift for everybody today. Okay. I brought a free gift, right? I, I spoke on um, a couple summits last fall and at the end of those interviews, you know, that, that was the question, where can people connect with you? Where can they find you? You know, by the way, I got a freebie, you know, if you go to TamaraHamilton.com forward slash download, you'll get the free engagement guide, free guide to social media engagement and go from posting to crickets to social media rockstar, right? And hundreds of people join my email list, right? And whenever you get to the front of the room, especially if it's a, a real live in-person room, on your presentation slide, in your presentation deck, as you are getting ready to speak about who you are, you want up there your social media handles. That's how they get those accounts, okay? That's where um, you see these funnels, right? You, well, you don't see them as funnels. You see these ads where Grant Cardone is giving away this book, you just pay for shipping, right? That's advertising, that's promotional expense. He's giving that book away to build trust, authority, and credibility with you, you pay for shipping, which most people, most rational, prudent people will say, that's fair, I'll pay for shipping, right? Now you're on his email list and he can follow up with you, right? And so what you don't see is Grant being put on stage with, you know, at Eric Worre's GoPro Summit, whatever, there's like a hundred and some thousand people that signed up for it virtually. Grant goes on there. Now a bunch of people, thousands, tens of thousands who didn't know Grant or maybe necessarily like Grant before, now they head over to his Instagram. Now they head over to his YouTube and now they start following him. And so if he does that, being on Eric Worre's GoPro Summit times 10, times a hundred, that's how his social media following blows up, okay? So a lot of the people who are selling you courses, they uh, really built their social media through off-platform methods, okay? So I know I just, I know I just gave you a lot. I know I just gave you a lot. So Zelda says, have you posted a free ebook on Amazon? Is that a good advertising strategy? I believe it is. I am not an author. I am being pushed to be an author, but I will be an author when I am ready to tell whatever story it is that I am divinely inspired to tell in book form. But what I have seen is my dear friend of nearly 30 years, at least 25, to, uh, yeah, a good 25 years, um, Paige Engel, when she released her travel book for women, she gave her book away for free and it was on Amazon. And so she ran a funnel and she built her email list and her book became, um, the whole reason she did that was to, um, and I gotta be careful because I don't wanna be telling nobody else's story and secrets, but the reason she did that, and this is a well-known strategy and tactic, so I will share this with you, um, is because when you can say that you have been a number one bestseller on Amazon, and she was in her category by, they don't care what the price is. So she gave the book away free in order to really boost sales during that time period to say she was a number one bestseller on Amazon. It's the same thing with podcasts. People who have podcasts, they will, especially early on in their podcast, they will not only do everything they can to encourage downloads, they will also encourage and incentivize, give incentive for people to um, give them a review because the more re good reviews they have within so many weeks of startup, they will land on the hot new whatever it is page on iTunes, right? So yeah, it definitely it definitely has a strategy. And in Kate, Paige's case, it was the download, it wasn't the physical copy of the book, so she really wasn't, there was really no expense to it for her, for the book to be given away free, but it created the trust, authority, and credibility, and it was a way to quote unquote buy saying number one bestseller.
And I'm not delegitimizing it being a number one bestseller, so please don't take it that way. You can be a bestseller with a free book. I don't think they look at the price point. I don't think they look at that. No. And it boosts it and it keeps it up so that you do end up with, I know Paige gets royalty checks to this day from that book. And that book is a good three, four, or five years old. Add value, then share freebie leading to your sales funnel. Yep. Because you can't take social media followers to the bank. You can't take social media likes to the bank. I worked at the bank for six, years, six seven years. And there was social media then, and I have yet to see somebody come in and deposit some likes and some followers. That just doesn't happen, right? But your email, when you have well-written emails and you are, you know, doing and engaging in real email marketing, your email will actually convert at a higher rate than social media on any given day, which is why, remember a few minutes ago when I said that um, you don't want to try to transact on social media, you want to take that and have a conversation offline or take them somewhere quote-unquote offline or off of that platform um, to your blog for example um, last week I ran some ads to blog posts just driving traffic to my blog because on my blog are traps I'm a little gangster I'm a little hood sometimes I listen to gangster music so I like to think I'm like this mobster or this gangster and so, you know, I, my street cred, I, I said traps on the internet. And so there's strategic placement to collect leads on my blog. So yeah, I, I'll run traffic to my blog all day long because I'm trying to do a couple different things. Number one is to collect the leads and get them on my list till they subscribe, die or buy is my, my philosophy. Now y'all got me pulling out that more masculine energy <laughs> and getting into that real hard online marketing space because that is definitely more of a masculine energy and not so much of the heart. Same, grow the email list. Yes, grow that email list. That's that, the money is in the list. The money, the for, the money is in the list and the fortune is in the follow-up. You've got to have a good email sequence and some automation set up and you wake up and there are Stripe, PayPal, whatever merchant you're using, notifications that you made money in your sleep. Any other questions? You want to get to the front of the room. There's so much value in getting to the front of the room um, because the front of the room, there's a saying that the people holding, the person holding the marker, the person at the front of the room is the person making the money back in the day and and they still do it so like if you ever see these ads on facebook where it's damon john or the shark whatever his whatever any other shark is coming to town and you can see them in person and it's free it's free because you're gonna sit through hours of real estate presentations and other presentations before they come on stage and at the end of every single presentation they're selling something at the back of the room right the person at the front of the room makes the money right the person I just over and over again the person at the front of the room makes the money right one of the best things I did for my business in 2013 was um, acquire my own real estate on Facebook. Well, Tamira, what do you mean? What is your real estate on Facebook? I have several groups. I've got groups um, with uh, members, not necessarily active members, but members of about 5,000, right? And so by owning, renting, because on Facebook you really don't own it, it's, it's rented real estate, that's where you can make your offer. You can do more transacting in those groups. You also can collaborate and there are groups, there's a group with about a half a million women entrepreneurs in it and you will see on every single post, SOM, not every single post, but certain posts, SOM. That stands for standout member. That person pays $100 a month to be able to go live in that group because the person who owns the group or is renting the group 
gets to determine the rules for the group. They don't allow any video to be shared into the group. You're not allowed to go live in the group unless you are a standout member. And to be a standout member, back to the mafia, you pay your tribute of a hundred dollars a month to be a standout member and one of the benefits is you get to go live in the front of the group and we're moving to the point where uh, Facebook ads are expensive enough that it makes more sense it's a better use of a hundred dollar a month ad budget to spend it getting to the front of the room than it is and though the only people allowed to pitch in the group to directly pitch in the group are standout members and it just makes uh, much more sense financially and speaking return on investment to be able to get to the front of the room than to pay Mark Zuckerberg directly for a Facebook ad and pay 25, 50 cents a click, right? Or 20 upwards. I know people who pay $800 to, to get a scheduled appointment on Facebook, but they pay $800, but their offer is gonna make them 12, so they made 400 on their 800. All right, that's a little deeper <laughs> than personal branding. Personal branding, go organic. It's so much easier to get the, the compounding when you go organic, right? And so, you know, you'll hear people like me say Facebook pages, I'll never say Facebook pages are dead. Because there are definitely specific reasons that I believe, three in particular, that I believe a, biz, a real business should have a Facebook business page. Number one is it legitimizes your business. Number two is the ability to advertise. And the third one is the analytics. Okay. And so I will, I will never say that they are dead, but they are definitely pay to play. So if you want organic reach for your business, you have that Facebook business page, but you need to set up a freebie with a funnel that that thank you page oh I'm giving y'all some <laughs> this this money right here this is money right here I should be sending y'all an invoice for this <laughs> you run a funnel with your freebie and the thank you page every single thank you page every single thank you email a, a delivering email where you're delivering the goods where that you promise and in your follow-up sequence you you're gonna direct them to join that Facebook group right and then that's your own room. You've created your own room. And now you also have leverage, okay? How many emails in a typical sales sequence? That's going to depend on the business, what the offer is, who your ideal client is. Some ideal clients might only want to hear from you once a month. You know, it's entirely up to you, the type of business, whether you whether it's e-commerce, whether it's a service, um, it's, it's really, if you, whether it's really just a personal brand, it's really going to depend on you, it, it, on, on those factors. It's really going to depend. Your email, your nurturing sequence though, when you get someone in your funnel, you need, I'm not saying every day for 30 days or 30 emails, but you need to have a month's worth of email sequence. On average, that's anywhere from eight to 10 emails can be more all depends all depends you you just gotta really give them a reason to number one open the email and then two read it and three click I'm gonna need some email addresses because I need to start sending out some invoices I'm just kidding any other questions I think we're a little bit over time, so I'm, I'm gonna get wrapped up and respect everyone's time. I've enjoyed this. Like I said, when I when I start talking about marketing, my mouth just runs. It just goes. It's 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 kind of kind of hard to shut me up. So, because because I, I just love it. I love I love what I do, and I I get I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna back down from it. I'm I'm pretty damn good at it. I'm pretty damn good at it. Like one of the best that I know. So. And other people know so, and some pretty impressive people have told me that as well. So um, I hope you've all found you know some great value in this. Do you have any other questions? Okay. So what I want to offer you is um, a ten-minute strategy session, and um, you can book that over at Tamira Hamilton. 
calendar.com. I need to make a keyboard shortcut for this because I've been using this one a lot. Calendar, okay? So, and then when you book that and you send, because it's going to take you over to my calendar on Facebook and um, you, I want you to put in the message that you're from Empowering Time Markers and you want a personal branding uh, strategy session. So all times are on Central Standard Time Zone and the, um, you, the, the service you're going to select is a polka dot connect. I need to make one for consultation. I thought there was one, but I don't know. People seem to get confused. So you want to go there and book your 10 minute strategy session. I've pinned that comment. Do I have a class? I have several classes. The class that I recommend to most people is going to get you the biggest bang for your buck. And that is the influence booster course. I'll drop that here. And that is the course that, um, it's, it's, it's a monster. <laughs> it's a monster. Like I've had to stop telling people it's the 30 day, 30 day social media marketing challenge because that's just one facet of it. Like it's like five, six courses in one. It's over a $2,000 value course that is priced much, much less than that. Right. And so it includes the first, um, module is on personal branding. It goes really in depth into personal branding. It goes in depth on um, there's some homework on writing your mission statement. You know what you what you are about and what you value. There is also a module on Facebook marketing. There is also a module on video marketing because that's how you get to the front of the room is video marketing. And then the last module is remember how I keep telling you you want to take everything offline. It teaches you the process to be able to move things offline very fluidly and effortlessly, very seamlessly to your your prospect, I hate that word, um, to your prospect where it's just very natural and seamless way to move that conversation offline because I believe conversation is the new lead and I need to just go ahead and do that course too. So that link for that is there as well, TamaraHamilton.com forward slash influence booster. And, um, you know, you get access for a full year. It's loaded with videos. There's some PDFs and workbooks in there. And um, if you go to courses.tamaraandhamilton.com, my entire course offering is there. There's a content planning workshop. There's Discover Your Avatar. There's all kinds of courses. And honestly, if you book the 10-minute strategy session with me, at the end of that, I'm going to be able to know more specifically what you need. Somebody just booked. <laughs> You're, I'm going to be able to identify more specifically which course or which, you know, what you should do next. And that includes, you know, up to, you know, working with me directly and even hiring me to do some things, some things for you. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Get, get to the front of the room. You want to get to where the money reside? Get to the front of the room. Get to the front of the room. I know a lot of people get so scared about that, but if you true to me, if you are in alignment, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to go, if you are truly 100% in alignment with your purpose, okay, with what your values are and what you stand for, if you are 100% in alignment, not only is getting to the front of the room going to be nat natural, effortless, and seamless like it is for me, you're going to love what you do so much that you can't shut up about it. And that's why people are going to invite you to the front of the room, right? And you're also, like I said, don't wait for people to ask you to the, get to the front of the room. Ask to get to the front of the room. Find out how you can get to the front of the room. A closed mouth does not get fed. But you got to get out there. That's how you do it in 2021, folks. The, the the wild wild west of facebook long gone you know this oh go viral going viral is a myth it's a lie there's a science behind going viral that's what they don't tell you right it's networks it's you know people literally networks of people pulled together i got this audience i got this audience and when you do this we're going to share this here here and here and because we're sharing this here and here when we do this we want you to share this here here and here that's really how stuff goes viral very rarely does something just truly go viral on its own very rarely there's a science behind it and money behind it they know exactly what they're doing okay so yes says tia <laughs>
See, I told you it's hard to get me to shut up. We're 15 minutes over and I am so respectful of people's time. I love doing this. I will come back anytime you want. Make sure you follow me on my um, marketing page. Make sure you shoot me a friend request or follow me if I'm at 5,000 again because I am all about pouring out value into the marketplace. When you love, when you do what you love, when you would do it for free, but people throw money at you, you're in the right spot, right? And that's how you're going to get to the front of the room, okay? So I look forward. I think a second person just booked their strategy session. I'm telling you, get to the front of the room. It works. Get to the front of the room. You're going to shine when you're talking about what you love and, do, and you're doing what you love. You're going to shine and you're going to get to the front of the room, all right? So thank you guys so much. Now I got to wind myself down and figure out how I'm going to go sleep at this time. But thank you guys so much for listening to me. And for those of you who have been here for the entire time, I especially thank you from the depths of my heart and soul. You guys have a good night. Bye-bye.